Hey guys, so this is problem four from chapter 13, and this section is on applications. Circuit, actually, I forgot what the name of this section is. It's called Circuit Analysis in the S, S Domain. So, um, so the first thing we need to do before we start doing analysis in the S Domain is to know how to translate impedance from the time domain into the S Domain. So we've got a 2 kilo ohm resistor, a 312.5 millihenry inductor, and a 12.5 nanofarad um, capacitor all connected in parallel. So we're going to, we need to find the S domain impedance and then poles and zeros of this circuit. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is translate this into the S domain. So this transformed to the S domain as just 2K. This is going to be, so we're just going to give it general name because we don't want to um, put in the numbers yet because I think that it's important as a, um, once you begin to think about circuit designs or whatever, in my opinion, it's important to preserve the relationship between RC, the time domain, um, the time constant, and if we just plug numbers in, we won't see the relationship as we're transforming it from the time domain into the S domain. So we're just going to keep it as um, general letters and plug in the numbers last so that we can preserve the relationship between RC and LC. So here's the capacitor or the inductor, and that transformed into the time domain as LS. And the capacitor transforms into the time domain as 1 over SC. Okay? And then from here, all of the rules of equivalence resistance applies, just like they did in the time domain. So R in parallel with LS in parallel with 1 over SC is um, the same as it was in the time domain. It's going to be 1 over R plus 1 over LS plus 1 plus... 1 over S, oh, SC inverse of itself is just going to be the reciprocal. So it's just going to be SC, and then the inverse of that. So now, before we take the inverse, we're going to combine everything. So that means, going back to basic algebra, we need to find a common denominator. And that common denominator is going to be RLS. So everything needs to be over RLS. So this term, 1 over R, is missing in LS, so it's going to be LS over R, LS, plus this term, 1 over LS, is missing in R, so it's going to be R over LS, and SC is missing RLS, so it's going to be RLS, SC, so that's going to be R, so that's going to be RLC times S squared over R L S. And I'm missing an R here. So now everything has a common de denominator of R L S, right? So everything is over R L S. Now we can go ahead and take the inverse. And that's just flipping the fraction around. So then this is really equal to, when we take the inverse, that's equal to R L S over, we're going to start with at the highest power, which is our LCS squared, plus LS, plus R. And now, we're going to get in the habit of getting S squared by itself with a 1 coefficient. The reason for that is because the table of inverse Laplace transforms says, um, the table of inverse Laplace transform has this power as a, um, as a one coefficient, and then you'll also, in order to ex, um, use partial, partial fraction expansion, you will have to have a one coefficient there, or otherwise, um, well, I mean, you don't really have to, but it makes your life a lot easier because of how the table of Laplace transforms work, and so um, the way I'm going to teach it is that you're, that's the first thing you're going to do, is get a one coefficient. So, you're going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over R, L, C, 1 over R, L, C. Okay. So now, on the top we have R's cancel with R, 
L cancel with L, so we got 1 over C. 1 over C times S. And then on the bottom, this term has an R and an L and a C, so it's just going to be S squared. And then this is going to be L cancel with L, so it's going to be 1 over RC times S. 1 over RC times S plus, and then R cancels with R, so it's going to be 1 over LC. So if we had put numbers in at the very beginning, we would have missed this relationship here, the time constant 1 over RC um, affecting S, and then the time constant LC over there. So that's how your choices of R, L, and C in design affect um, the Phoenix. Now we're ready to put in numbers. So I'm just going to let you plug in numbers on your own, but this will work out to be 8 times 10 to the 7th S over S squared plus 40,000 S plus 2.56 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, so your calculator, if you're an engineering major, you should probably have some kind of scientific calculator that can do factoring. So I just plug this into the factor function and it factors it for me. So eight, this factors out into 8 times 10 to the 7th S times S plus 8,000 times S plus 32,000. Okay, so you are also going to start getting in the habit of factoring things out. Because when you, uh, things of interest are going to be zeros. And that's in part B. We're supposed to find zeros and poles. Zeros are when the numerator is zero. Poles are when the denominator is zero. So if for part B, you have one zero, which is at, at S equals zero, and then you have two poles, and that's going to be pole one is going to occur at negative 8,000 kilorads, no, negative 8 kilorads per second, 8 k rad. And then the other P2 is going to be at negative 32 k rad per second. So you always want to, okay, so take away for downstream, as uh, in later courses, you will want to have things in factor form for finding poles and also for fa uh, partial fraction of expansion because down the line, you're going to be writing this back into the time domain and the table of Laplace transforms root is um, you transform back by rewriting this as partial fraction expansion. And that is this problem. All right, don't forget to share the video if it helped you, and please like the Facebook. Thanks.